What's going on everybody? Ethan York here and today I am here to answer the question that literally nobody but me is asking and that is, is the BMW 328D F31 sports wagon the best daily BMW that you can buy? Let's get into the boring on paper stuff. This particular car makes about 180 horsepower, which is pretty close to what a Civic hatchback turbo makes. And it makes a little over 250 foot pounds of torque, which is a pretty substantial upgrade compared to say something like a Civic turbo. Now here's where things start to get interesting with this car as a daily driver. Since it is a diesel, you can easily still get in the low 30s miles per gallon wise in the city and on the freeway, depending on how slow you're willing to go, depending if you're willing to turn air conditioning on, I have seen my miles per gallon meter for well over a mile read above 60 miles per gallon going on a flat freeway surface. The car has about a 14 gallon tank and I've seen the estimated range go up to as high as 605 miles. Right off the bat, the thing that I wanna say positively about the 328D as a daily driver compared to something like a Civic Turbo, for example. I'm gonna be using that car as a comparison point a lot because I have a lot of experience in that. And prices for a Civic Turbo and one of these are actually pretty close depending on the mileage. Civics and Japanese economy cars in general are great at getting their posted fuel economies at posted speed limits. 65 to 70 miles an hour with no air conditioning on, the Civic and all these other cars are great at getting their posted 35 to 40 miles per gallon. But in real world scenarios, if you're a normal person who really drives like 75, 80, 85 miles an hour on the freeway, runs air conditioning, potentially has the windows down, getting 40 miles per gallon is almost completely out of the question. That's where the German cars specifically seem to shine from my experience. They may not all get great gas mileage in general, but for whatever reason, cruising at 80 to 90 miles an hour, even at 100 miles an hour on the freeway, most BMWs actually get pretty solid fuel economy. So this car, which already gets 30 to 35 in the city, if you're cruising at 80 on the freeway, it is perfectly reasonable to assume that you're still getting 40, 45, even 50 miles per gallon. Furthermore though, and this is more of a personal anecdote, anytime I get in something like a Honda Civic, a Honda Accord, Hyundai Elantra, Kia Optima, any of those cars, the second you sit in them, they immediately remind you that they're an economy car. And the second you push on the gas pedal, that feeling is now reassured even more because the refinement in the drivetrain and the powertrain on these cars just isn't there compared to the Germans. Even a Civic Turbo, which has loads of low end torque, right? You get it all at like 2000 RPMs, that car still just doesn't feel exciting enough to make you want to drive it spiritedly, which I realize isn't something that a daily driver necessarily should have. But at the same time, if you're a car guy looking for a daily, you don't really want a car that makes you hate yourself every time you push the gas pedal down. The 328D, because it makes somewhere in the range of 250, 260 foot pounds of torque stock, the excitement factor is actually kind of there. And let me tell you, the CVT in the Civics and all these other cars is hot garbage, even though they got paddle shifters. The ZF transmission in this 328D is legitimately good. Is it ZF eight speed in a Supra or dual clutch in an F80 good? Absolutely not. But it shifts pretty damn quick for what it is considering that again, this is kind of an ideal daily driver car. It doesn't need to have any of these extra performance benefits. Yet it does and still gets crazy high gas mileage. And that's really the whole point Point that I'm trying to make with this video is not only does this car knock it out of the park as a great daily, it's got pretty solid back seat room, not the greatest, right? It's not a five series, but it's still decent room. The sunroof, if you get a car optioned with it, is pretty nice. And since it's a wagon, it's got SUV size storage space back there with seats that fold down so that you could fit extra large items in here. Now, taking all of that into account, this car still drives like a three series, which is an excellent sports sedan, even not in M trim. So let's go take this thing out to my local Canyon, see how it drives out there so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're getting in the 328D getting ready to go on a little bit of a canyon drive. I've got the K 
camera set up as best as I can. I have got a coolant light, even though I've had it checked and my coolant levels are all good. So let's pull out of here and get going on a drive to the canyons. Just a small little canyon road, nothing crazy. I would like to say before we get started on our drive and start talking about pretty much nothing but performance, I would like to mention that, you know, something that you don't really get to think about much when thinking about a daily driver is the overall rarity of the car. Obviously, if you're looking at something like a Civic Accord, any Japanese Econo box, right? There's tons of them, there's a million of them available. Uh, not really much rarity going on. I will say out of all of the cars that I've owned, this car has probably gotten me the most attention, which is weird, right? Like I had an, I had an F80 M3, it's a beautiful car, Alpine white, uh, with the black interior with the comp seats and all that good stuff. Um, and people just love the wagon. I don't know why people come up to me nearly at every gas station that I'm at asking about what it is. When they find out it's a diesel, most people who don't already know, like they freak out about that too. Um, so this is a pretty special car and I think it'll have some reason uh, to continue to hold its value over time. I picked this, um, this one up for $20,000 uh, with about 90,000 miles on it. And realistically, I don't really see nice spec versions of this ever really being worth less than 20,000 ever again. Uh, unless diesel gets really, really hard to find. So I figure that's something that's worth mentioning before we start ripping it on this canyon road here. We have talked enough about how good this car can be as a daily driver. Let's get it on some twisties to see if it's any good as a car to take on the back roads. All right. So first thing, like pretty much any F chassis BMW, the steering is atrociously numb. You basically can't feel anything. Now it does weight up, kind of okay in the corners, but it's like you got to put an awful lot of load on the front tires to really feel anything. Uh, I'm in regular sport mode. You could put it in sport plus and it gets slightly heavier, but overall the steering feel really isn't that great. The brakes really aren't that great either, but they, they're not necessarily such a weak point that it's something that you're constantly thinking about. But see, right there, I mean, this thing is staying really flat. Every time I take it out in the canyons, I'm always really impressed with just, I don't know, I guess for whatever reason, I expected this thing to kind of drive like an SUV, and it really doesn't. I mean, this thing, the little bumps there, it just stays so compliant and so flat for what it is. I mean, granted, right, is it a GT3? No, it's not a GT3. But man, this thing can absolutely rip if you want it to. A little bit of understeer. We'll slow down on the downhill here. But I just, I don't know. I, the steering is just, it doesn't communicate with me whatsoever. So it's not a massively engaging driving experience or anything, but it just smashes. It just rips, man. I don't know what to tell you. Like, granted, right? Maybe because I don't have a whole lot of experience driving cars at the absolute limit, maybe this car feels a little bit nicer than it really is because I'm not capable of driving it, you know, at 10 tenths. But man, at whatever level I'm driving it at right now, it's given me, I'm having an awful good time right now. I mean, we're going appropriate freeway speeds. I don't know how it looks for you guys on camera, but we're, we're cooking. We're having a good time. Woo. All right. I don't know. It, is it the most sporty car in the world? No, but, and it's funny, we got a Civic hatchback in front of us. I feel like the Civic hatchback is a great comparison point simply just because it's a small four liter turbo that gets good gas mileage, that has pretty decent storage space. And granted, I understand that the base price of this car compared to the base price of a Civic hatch is nowhere close. But if you're looking for a used car, I mean, those things are gonna be $20,000 plus 
throughout the entire time at this car market is ridiculous simply because it's a Honda, it's reliable, they typically hold their value and everything is just super expensive right now. But if you ask me, if you're looking at a $20,000, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more price bracket and you're looking for a daily driver, if you want something that is fun to drive, has a good amount of storage space, gets unreasonably high gas mileage and is actually kind of enjoyable to rip around i mean i really can't think of any other car that is better than this one my phone overheated so i didn't get to finish my point what i was going to say is that i personally think that this is just such a good looking car especially when you consider all of the other good characteristics that this has like the gas mileage like the driving dynamics i mean even compared to something like an e63s or an rs6 avant in my opinion i think this car just looks better than those like the proportions are just so good i'm super partial to the headlights and taillights of the lci sports wagons even just the regular f3x and f8x cars the headlights and taillights on the LCIs is just so good. And of course, I'm biased. I used to have an F80. The fact that this interior is pretty close to an F80. Again, I realize I'm biased, but I feel like this is one of the best car interiors ever in terms of just pure functionality. Like the screen is in a great spot. The shifter is in a great spot. The knob in the middle to control everything on iDrive just works really well. The version of iDrive that came with the 2016 models like that are in my car just works very well. Like it's a functional interior on top of looking great and the exterior obviously looks really great as well. So to me, there are few other cars that do as many things right as this car in turn if you're if you're looking at it as a daily driver and ultimately that was the point that i wanted to make with this video you can go out and you can get a civic or you can get an accord and you can get one of these economy cars and sure maybe you'll save a little bit of money on maintenance and this that and the other but ultimately this 328d wagon is going to get better gas mileage is going to be more fun to drive and subjectively looks a billion times better than all of those cars that I just listed. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this for me, please let me know. This has been a video format that I've been wanting to do for a really long time, and I'd love to be able to potentially review some other people's cars. So if you like the content, let me know, and I will see you guys some other time.